So when we look at this QSAM, now it looks pretty good. We see this here a little uptick, but we're like, oh, okay, we're already saving this much. Not bad. Let's look at it from the different perspective. This is just quick run through, and I can give that. If anybody's interested, we can just stay after and talk about how to calculate the actual QSAM. But again, it's just the difference between the actual and targets and running total. Let's go back to this one. So we implemented stuff here. This looks pretty stable, and it looks to be almost two month period. That's why you need now a new baseline. You cannot use this baseline after you did all of that and celebrate your successes over here. You could, but then you're cheating yourself. Once you implement all this, this is your new norm. This is what you should strive for every day. So this is your new baseline. So now you repeat that baselining process over here. So not over there, down here. Wow, that changed the Q sum, didn't it? Remember how we were like cruising down on the bottom? It was almost flat. We were all happy because we saved so much. We're actually losing money now. If we satisfy ourselves with the old baseline, we're losing money after we implemented all that. And we will never know because we will look at the old baseline. So at the very minimum, baseline should be adjusted every year. If you don't have any capital expenditures, you don't have any big changes in your energy profile, your baseline should be adjusted every year. Because that will tell you true story how you're doing that year. That's why you have those 3% year over year savings. It's not 3% of 2007, it's 3% of last year, which might be already 30% off 2007. But that's how you have to look at that. You can't live on laurels forever. This is a new beginning. And this is cause for concern. At this point, you have one break in line. At this point, I'm sending my, I have my system set up to send me an email and say, something seriously going on here. Go check it out before it gets to this. Because if you don't have that, what will happen is you will get over here in that stable period, you will keep getting reports. And if you get just reports of how something runs without any context, after two weeks, these reports will not be shiny new thing that all we are excited about, and nobody will look at them. And then after a year, you'll end up here, and then everybody will be questioning, how the heck did we get there? Well, you don't want to do that analysis here. You want to know here. That's what QSUM does for you. This is why it's important to have the QSUM. Not because it's mathematically correct, not because it's a really fancy word for mathematics and we want to feel comfortable and important. No, because to give us an idea when we go off the rails. Because knowing when we go off the rails prevents us from going all the way up here. Okay. So we talked about this meter quite a bit. Jeff showed you a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, he showed you the meter. He showed you how it can be attached. Effectively, this meter can be attached to any Ethernet port you have on your facility. Depending on your IT infrastructure, you could log into that meter from around the world. I worked with companies where we installed the equipment. We built equipment, and then we installed it. And we had a little, at that time, I'm dating myself. We had a little modem on the equipment, and I can phone in in China installation, and I can find out exactly how it runs. No different with this, except you don't need a modem now. We use Ethernet and all sorts of high-speed data. That's the same thing. You can get information from anywhere in the world. This is one very simple example, no question. It doesn't apply to everybody. It doesn't apply to every situation. But it applies to 95% of all industrial requirements. If you have three or four major gas users, you can have a meter that logs our billing data from our billing meter for about $2,000.
you can have that billing meter information into your spreadsheet. You put two of these meters somewhere in your major gas users and you just subtract the rest and you have energy management system. So what we were planning on doing, have one more run around here if you have any questions and then I would give you the cost but I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to give the cost here and then once we're done you can take a look at the meter again, ask any questions rather than going back and forth. This is the cost. Okay. $1,000 for installation, $1,000 for data logger, and $5,000 total. Okay. So that little data logger that Jeff was showing you, we only re recently learned of that, and um, they're very capable in that aspect. You can attach eight inputs into that box and the 24 volt DC and the box itself and that's going to cost you less than a thousand dollars. I put there a thousand dollars for the round numbers, but in that area. Thousand dollars for installation and isolation valve. This isolation valve that allows you to pull the meter whenever you want and just close the line. And insertion meter is about three thousand dollars. Again, it will heavily depend on what you want to measure, where you want to measure it. So I don't want to be saying it's exactly three thousand dollars. It can be from two thousand to five thousand dollars. It's range. Okay. So for $5,000, you can have data point that you can use. For most of the facilities, three of these will satisfy all their needs. And because you came all the way here, we have a special promotion for you. For a limited time. We will apply additional incentives for the metering because we love you. Um, what this basically is, we will give you up to $6,000 or 100% of the cost towards any sort of metering of thermal energy. So this can mean one of these mini systems. It can mean you already have three or four uh, meters in your facility that you send Joe to read every morning. Don't do that. That's a bad practice. Connect them to something like this box or to your own box or whatever way you want to do it and we'll give you up to $6,000 for that. If you have a sensor on your oven that measures the number of gadgets and you can say for this number of gadgets this is the energy I need. That sensor is valuable information for your energy needs. That also would apply. Of course, there's limitations. You have to speak to one of our energy solution consultants to review the application and uh, installation of measurement tools and 30 days of logged data. So we're not going to get people write down by, you know, by hand information. It has to be logged data for 30 days. It has to be received by us by October 1st to qualify. And this is on top of our usual incentives. You have to remember, we usually pay up to 50% of the cost of your metering in facilities. It's to get the market to start thinking, how much energy do I really use? Remember, the whole point is to start treating energy like your raw material input. You wouldn't buy extra rolls of steel to, for stamping if you didn't need it. So why the heck do you buy extra natural gas or electricity or water? It's no different. It's not like it's God-given thing. It's like you control it. So let's measure it. Let's control it. 